Well, hey, welcome to the X Podcast. Excited to have you back for another thrilling episode. And I have two of my best friends with me today. I have Trey back. Yeah. Trey back. That's not your last name. But Trey is back because he was with us for the last episode. And we have Tucker Johnson on the Uh, podcast. uh, Oh, gosh. Not Russ. No, Russ is, he'll be back soon. Russ is still gone. He'll be back soon. How are you doing? Good. You've been out here before a couple times. I have a couple times. Feels like home. Yes, <laughs> feels like home. <laughs> Someone kept the seat warm for me. For those who maybe don't know Tucker, if you watch this or listen and you're not in our small sphere of community, Tucker is, uh, what would you say your title is? Worship director slash social worship media worship director media. slash creative worship director social slash, social slash, social slash clothing, slash designer, clothing slash designer slash... slash we just call Bumper him Slash. Video maker Slash. His name is <laughs> okay. his name is Slash, and uh, but Tucker is uh, he's on the team and he helps mm-hmm. sing and lead worship and create music with us mm-hmm. and all kinds of fun stuff in that regard. Mm-hmm. So yeah. good to have you on here. Good to be back. Good to be back. Anyways, well, I have you guys on here for a reason because I wanted to talk about music, and I thought who else to talk about music with mm-hmm. than you guys. Exactly. And I think both of you guys love music. That's mm-hmm. one thing I know for sure. Mm-hmm. And when did you first get interested in music? Um, I so neither of my parents are like super musical. Yeah. And but I think my mom would probably say that she doesn't really listen to music unless I'm singing. <laughs> <laughs> Which Same. is on Sundays when she tu- brought, br- uh-huh. tunes in from Texas. Um, she brought my dad loved reports. music. <laughs> Um, but so I, I started piano lessons when I was six though. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And so I took piano from six to 12 and then I started taking guitar mm-hmm. and did guitar lessons from like a phenomenal jazz guitar guy mm. who's just, I mean, he taught music, Yeah. you know, and, and, and then guitar. So he just taught music theory of, first. Yeah. Oh, did you have to learn music theory I got, on guitar, like with guitar before he taught you chords and. Um, Did he talk about well, scales? Because and of piano, yeah, that's that foundation. Yeah, that theory. That's very helpful. And so, um, but I mean, he did. I mean, a big part of what he did would would teach just the theory behind chord changes and chord shapes and chord, you know, mm. sounds and you know all that stuff. But he, uh, so I t- I did that and I I um I led worship probably from like fourteen fifteen mm. in church stuff. On. Yeah, so. Okay, long so time. you so long really time. only led worship for about five or six years. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. So you're like Trey nineteen. Just turned he just 24. turned twenty-four. Actually, he just had a birthday a couple of days ago. Yes. Uh, you don't, we don't want to tell your 24. age. Twenty-four. Trey wore a shirt on <laughs> 20, his birthday 20. at church, and it said nineteen ninety-nine. Yeah. And so we told everybody because it was that, on his birthday. We're like, he was that born was... on this year. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. I told everybody he was twenty-four. Mm-hmm. He's twenty-four. He has a twelve-year-old. <laughs> he has a what? What are the ages of your kids? Uh, so it's thirteen. Thirteen-year-old. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So you're maybe just a we little bit older than twenty-four, yeah, but they, not much yeah, older yeah. than twenty-four. He. Yeah. yeah. And so, what about you? What's your background in music? Because I know you. As long as I've known you, it's always been connected to music. Mm-hmm. Um. My mom and dad always tell the story about when I was a baby and I would cry that I knew the song This Kiss by Faith Hill. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) And that would immediately make me stop crying. Really? Yeah. So like my... Like like what part? Would you want to sing a little bit of it? (laughs) (laughs) My aunt didn't believe her. And so I'm like losing my mind in the backseat. My mom's like, watch. And she turns it on and I stop crying immediately. Oh my Mm. goodness. So I guess since I was born, I was just a... Been a country Prodigy and... Yeah. I've been able to recognize different songs. <laughs> wow, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> no, um, but similar to Trey, like I've grown up singing and leading worship. I remember I grabbed the mic at six years old and led the song Let It Snow at my church. Oh my. my. All the way back in the day. But I went to school for music and I didn't know how to read music before school. So I just recently, mm. in the past four or five years, oh wow, I've been out of college. So that's not true. You're getting old up. now. You're getting growing old. up now. I used to be like college is last year, but college was 2020. Mm. That's, That's when you graduated. Ago. Yeah. Oh my. So um, recently learned music and Pop. have loved it ever since. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you you have always been around music. Like, so are your parents musical? Your dad plays drums. My well, dad plays drums. My You're, mom. She likes plays the music. kazoo. She sings in the car. She, she could sing if she had to. She sings in the car. Yeah. Okay. And so you guys both love music. Mm -hmm. I've always loved music in regards to the church more than I did. Mm -hmm. And that partially is because of my background growing mm -hmm. up. We didn't really listen to music other than pretty much what was in the church. <laughs> <laughs> so that was what I was making. I was thinking, oh, let's have a conversation. Because I think one of the things that is always an interesting dynamic uh, and again, depending on your faith background, if you don't have a faith background, then this might be just an odd conversation in general. <laughs> but I think for those who do, and a lot of people who do follow along, they come in either from a church background mm -hmm. or depending, and we're, it's all different, but like, I remember growing up, um, and it was like, there was a clear divide between the secular and what was called the sacred. Mm -hmm. There was the, you know, there's the secular music and well, it was really discouraged, frowned upon, you know, that we don't really listen to secular, secular music growing up in a religious home. And so I pretty much did, I almost didn't listen to very much mm -hmm. secular music at all when I was a kid, younger as a kid. And uh, probably not until I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Like really, like I can't remember back to stuff. I, in fact, I, the only thing I ever remember my dad playing that wasn't Christian music was the Beach Boys. Hey, I always, my dad too. I always felt like that was like, so I always, yep. so what was weird was growing up and then kind of like as I got older and started to think about music or like music at myself and be challenged, mm -hmm. I always was like, well, there's Christian music and the Beach Boys. They're acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> and everything else wasn't. I know, I was weird. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, um, and so that was like my only real memory and experience uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to music, like growing up and, um, but you know, obviously I, I loved music and playing music and playing drums and, and bass. And I played guitar and led worship for a little bit, a long, 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 long time ago before you were even probably Noel. I don't, when were you born? 98. Yeah. Before you were one even before born, me. before you were born. Yeah. Yeah. One year <laughs> before both <laughs> you were born. No. And, uh, and, and so I, I just, I, I've, I've always kind of had this, you know, thought and I, I was telling you guys, I saw a reel mm -hmm. recently by Jackie Hill Perry where she was talking about music and she was talking about her decision to stop listening to Beyonce. Mm -hmm. And for reasons of, there seems to be inferences of witchcraft or false deities or things in her music now. Mm -hmm. And she said she loved Beyonce, was a huge Beyonce fan, had all of her music from the time she was eight. And then, you know, and so that was just, I think it's her personal decision of where she's come in that regard and it just started to make me think uh, about music and I thought one of the things that we do in our community of faith is we use music mm -hmm. music has always been a part of worship whether you look at uh, whether you look at uh, Christianity whether you look at Jewish faith whether you look at other religions mm -hmm. music always seems to be a part of it and uh, I was going to ask just uh, just curiosity what is it do you think music does to us mm -hmm. What is it that's different about music than other things when it comes to who we are, our soul, how it affects us? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it obviously moves us. Like I can think about movies that have like killer soundtracks mm -hmm. that without that, it wouldn't yeah. be that good of a movie. Mm -hmm. Like, um, mm -hmm. I can't remember. Well, Interstellar. Mm -hmm. Has a pretty awesome yes. soundtrack. That soundtrack's pretty powerful. Um, Top Gun. Guardians of the oh. Galaxy is what I'm thinking of. Guardians of the Galaxy. It has like an epic soundtrack. Mm -hmm. that I would have never watched that movie without it. Have you been on the ride? No. Oh, man. The ride. And Baby Driver. Do you remember that movie? I do. Mm -hmm. He used like to listen to music all the time. soundtrack. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I just think it moves us. And I think I connect so many moments to like songs. Like mm -hmm. when I was growing up, my mom played Jackson 5 every, every single morning when you're getting ready for school. Mm -hmm. And so when I hear Jackson 5, like it pulls that like nostalgia. Mm -hmm. and like I remember, I can like see the frosted flakes in front of me mm -hmm. and like I can feel all <laughs> yeah. those feelings again. And even like, Deeper, like when I hear the song that was played at my brother's funeral, like it just takes mm. me back. But like nothing else does that to me, really. Like mm. sense or, but I just feel like when I hear music, it's like it takes me back to moments, even in our church and in mm. my life. That's crazy. That's, just, that's pretty know. true. What about you? I think, um, I mean, I think there is this weird connection from our like, from our like the senses that we have mm -hmm. that, that create these weird connections. Because mm -hmm. I think for me, the like 
music definitely will take me back to a certain point in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's, you know, my, you know, driving around and when I'm 17 and like, I'll listen, you know, listen to a song now and it'll take me right back there, mm -hmm. you know, or even like, like, I, I think the scent, like the sense of smell does that for me too. Yeah. Like it really does. Like, um, do you know one of the reasons scientifically why? Why? The olfactory nerve uh -huh. from your nose. Oh, yeah. It actually terminates in the center of your brain, the limbic system, which mm. is where a lot of memories and other things are. Yeah. Hmm. And so there's actually, there's actually good physical evidence of why we smell things. It can take us, you know, you smell mm. apple pie, and you remember when your yeah. grandmother used to make apple pie. It's but I think music kind of does that in the it, same oh, way, though, mm -hmm. oh, right? Yeah. I think it does. And I think there's probably some scientific things about the frequencies that music yeah, creates. Maybe yeah. that's it. That, like, tie into, like, you know, how our brains operate. Um, I mean, even you, you think of, um, you know, um, listening to, to classical music to study. You yeah. Know, people, people say mm -hmm. that. And it's like there's something that it does to your brain um, that, that it, it just makes you concentrate better, mm -hmm. some people, you know. I but, actually read a, a study on that not long ago mm -hmm. that they said, and this is uh, for parents out there with little kids, they said um, kids that grew up exposed to classical um, music, like mm -hmm. the Beethovens, the Bach, mm -hmm. those kind of things, actually all scored significantly higher Crazy. in school and everything. Jeez. That there's something about that music, I don't know if it's the composition of it, there's something about that actually affects our ability to learn. Mm -hmm. So like what you're saying, there are studies out that they've actually shown that. That mm -hmm. explains it. Because my mom played the Jackson. <laughs> 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 that case closed. That, that makes, <laughs> so there's something, right? Yeah, and I think um, I think also a lot of music, if you think of it, it's written it's written from an emotion. Mm -hmm. mm. It's true. And so whether it the emotion true. is like, you know, like joy or, mm. you know, um, from if it's a song, a song is written from loss mm -hmm. or from, you know, anger. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, those emotions are going to be portrayed through that song. And I mm -hmm. think the way that we as humans are wired, we're able to feel that. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that's also, you know, we're kind of wired for connection. Like it doesn't yeah. matter if an introvert and extrovert. Mm -hmm. I think there's this, this connection that music does that mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. it connects you with like connecting with the song is some weird, I think, weird way of actually you connecting with another human being who created that song. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I agree. I think that there's like a subconscious effect that music has on us mm -hmm. that we don't even realize just for all those reasons or like it even where I, like you said, I think it taps into a part of us that's mm -hmm. super emotional. Mm -hmm. I even just think, I even think, you know, when dating way back to the Psalms that were mm -hmm. first written hundreds and hundreds of years, you know, back where you got David wrote most of the Psalms were connected to emotions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, or they're connected to, you know, something that someone believes that, you know, just a truth or something. So there is something I think really powerful about music. Obviously in the church world, we use music. We, we, mm -hmm. you know, it's part of a way for us to engage and connect with God. I think there's, you know, I, I I've always been a little bit, um, I've always been a little like, unclear about the whole, you know, sacred and secular mm -hmm. and creating a line and blurring mm -hmm. it. I, I just remember like even from, you know, a young age when we would have times in like high school or not high school, but like in youth group, mm -hmm. you know, where it was like, uh, I just remember there were some parties that I was at where it was like, you know, when people were really moved, they would go and grab their bad CDs and burn them. <laughs> I'm serious. Do you, do you know what a CD is? Oh, yeah. Say, oh, I can you said guys tell me what a CD it's is? It's a compact disc. <laughs> <laughs> They're shiny. <laughs> and they play music. And they play music. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sorry. So that, that was a little dating myself. No, I think they, for me too. I, I mean, I think, you know, um, I, I grew up in the church world. Mm-hmm. Um, but I very much had a foot in, I mean, in the punk rock world or the, mm. the metal band world. Like I just, I had my feet in both. Screamo. Yeah. No, that's too soft. Oh, metal. oh, too soft. <laughs> okay. But no, but he's like, going to sing one of his old yeah. songs for us. No, but I, I guess my point in that is like, I've always kind of tried to figure out where that line is. If yeah. there's a line, yeah. should there be a line? Right. And I remember even sometimes where it's like, Similar to what you said, it's like, nope, I'm getting rid of all secular music. And so I've got this vivid memory driving my 95 Chevy, red Chevy Blazer. Mm -hmm. um, 
and even though I was born in 99. Yeah, and that's and interesting. Well, you can drive an old car. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. 20 um, <laughs> year old car. But no, <laughs> and we, uh, it was me and Jessica, and because um, we dated in high school, and I'm I'm getting my secular CDs out of my giant. Yeah, yeah compa- open the like, what are they CD, called? CD organizers, or organizers. You know, and I had some on my visor. Visor, and I'm taking them and rolling the window down, and just like a frisbee, <laughs> out. You guys are old just because it's like. <laughs> but Today it's, is just to remove it I know, from your playlist. Say, I That's all it is. Like, delete it. Delete, it off delete off my, my playlist. <laughs> That's when so I funny. was 13. <laughs> but then six months later, maybe not even that, maybe maybe not even that long, like, I go back and I buy them all again. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, wh- and the, you know. The I, conviction wore off. I'm going to get it con- again. The conviction or <laughs> the emotion yeah. or the, I don't know. Yeah. I think that's something. Well, I think that, it's a tension that you're just, yeah. like, trying to figure out. And, you know, I, 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 I think that one was always difficult for me. And then mm-hmm. throughout the years, I always just kind of created this mental line mm-hmm. that was, like, well, there is no such thing as um, secular or sacred music, that mm-hmm. God's behind the creation of all notes and rhythms and, vi- mm-hmm. and you know, sounds and you, gives us an ability, a creative ability to create with what, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, I feel like the resource that we have to create with comes from him. Mm-hmm. But, you know, okay, I would always say, well, the lyrics themselves could be inappropriate, but I don't know that a chord progression is inappropriate. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or a style of music. So I, I would all, that's kind of like how I kind of justified or mm-hmm. in my head of trying to, you know, understand. But I still think too, as I got older, you know, I, I just, I remember, I guess what I'm trying to speak to is like, I remember for a really long time, it's almost goes back to, this is a totally different conversation, but it goes back to like what purity culture used to be like yeah. in the eighties and the nineties, you know, a long time ago, again, mm-hmm. before you guys were born in the 80s, Yeah. <laughs> what purity culture used to be like, I coming out of that to an extent, I always had this like tension in me of, um, you know, like, and I, I think over time it kind of dissipated some, maybe that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a bad mm-hmm. thing. Maybe I shouldn't, uh, you know, uh, admit that where I'd have this tension that if I listened to anything that was like, and it wasn't just music, I remember like listening to like a sec- secular radio station mm-hmm. that was even like talk or mm-hmm. it was, you know, just whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I'm not supposed to be listening to it, but it's really funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I would feel guilty and I'm like, but it's not what they're saying is not that bad. Right. You know what I mean? And so I think that there's and I think I'll probably the reason why I mentioned this, I think all, all of us that have been around a community of faith have probably felt that tension yeah. of like, how do I like walk down a tension of like I. I don't want to just fill my mind with maybe inappropriate things, but at the same time, how do I not just have this blanket, you know, oh, if you're not in a Christian label, then it's bad. Mm -hmm. I think I remember when you were talking about that, I remember trying churches when I went to college Mm because I always went to like my parents' church when I went to college. I was for the first time trying to find a church that fit me and what I believed and what phase of life I was in. And I remember me and my friends would load up in our cars and our vans and we would go to these churches. And I remember we went to this church and they were playing like secular music as you're walking in. All of us were like, oh, this is cool. Like they're going to be normal people. Here. <laughs> and that's yeah. like what drew us all back was it was like, oh, it's not yeah. like you're walking in and there's this like deep worship, slow, like pulsy rat. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like those mm-hmm. kind of songs. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, this is upbeat. This is fun. This is what I listen to in the car. Yeah. So when I come to church, I'm like, oh, this is the people are going to be normal probably. Right. But I yeah. think that just like, that's so it can, it connected. <laughs> yeah. It connected. And like your, even your phrase, like they're going to be normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're not going to be crazy. <laughs> they're not going to be crazy. And that, but that's weird to think about like, yeah. Oh, just them playing music that, that either you like, or that is mm-hmm. good. Mm. <laughs> or, you know, um, I, th- I think back to that Jackie Hill Perry video that you shared, mm-hmm. that you mentioned, um, you shared with me and just watched it. And um, I think I took a couple things from it. Mm-hmm. I, I think um, she did a good job, like saying it's a personal conviction for her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, I think that's in our, in our world of really fast clips of on social media mm-hmm. and like hot takes, like there's, it, it's really easy to, to see something and be like, oh, I have to do that. Mm-hmm. Right. Or, oh, that's, sure. that's for me. You know, yeah. but I, I think she really kind of walked through this is what her conviction was mm-hmm. to, to not listen to Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I think it's an interesting road to walk, especially when it comes to Beyonce specifically. And I mean, because you, I feel like, and again, this is from my, my mm-hmm. view, I feel like you go down the Beyonce's into witchcraft. Mm hmm. Then that's going to take you into the all. The, I mean, just just do a Google search, yeah, of Beyonce conspiracies, and see what comes up. Sure, and you know, and so like, where does that stop? <laughs> right. You know, yeah. um, I think the truth behind that video, though, I mean, is you know what we um, what we listen to mm-hmm. in music is is going to stick in our heads. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So how do we protect our hearts? Yeah. yeah, and I think even like even if you're not in the faith community, I think. I think people who, you know, are, are still going to wrestle with what's the right thing to do yeah. and what's the wrong thing to do. You know, just because yeah. you're, in, you know, in the church world, we're not the only people who think that, you yeah. know, it looks differently yeah. maybe at times, but I think, um, I think that's kind of what it is coming back to is like, what is, what is good for my heart, yeah. mm-hmm. for my, for my mind, yeah. you know? Um, I mean, the reason we sing worship songs in church is because those songs, mm are written from truth from the Bible, yeah. mm-hmm. which our church preaches, right? And yeah. so the hope is that these worship songs get stuck in our heads mm-hmm. and that transfers into and our the heart truth. and then it like kind of yeah, affects like that. how we live. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The There's, truth gets in there, right? It yeah. becomes memorable. And so, so on the o- other side of that, I understand the... I understand how it's like, we got to protect your mind. Yeah. Sure. Well, I just <laughs> wrestle with that weird tension sure. of like when and how. I, you saying? When we were talking about this before, I told you guys about how, like, when you play, like, a Lil Wayne song from 2008, <laughs> I can tell you every single word, <laughs> and I had no idea that those words were in my soul, but <laughs> there are so many songs that I've listened to growing <laughs> up or even now that, like, when you stop and think about, oh, my gosh, like, I've committed those words like, and, and thought them so many times that I can just spit them right out to you. But then on the contrary, there are so many worship songs that, like, or scriptures that I can remember because I've sang songs with those lyrics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it just, this whole idea has really challenged me of, like, okay, we know music is powerful. Yeah. And we know that music can stick with us. So it's like, is it a tool that I can leverage in like for my benefit, like is, Mm -hmm. could I listen to this more than this and would that impact me? Yeah. I think, I think you're making both you guys making some great points. I think the one thing that we're recognizing is that music is powerful. Music does affect us. And I think you you go back to one of the reasons, even we're talking about the Bible, but even going back to the old Testament, one of the things that they did to, for, to help pass down truth was to put it in song. Mm -hmm. That was like, they would pass down the truth and sometimes they'd pass down history by putting it in a song format or some format because it was helps you remember. And I think like we were saying, you know, memory is powerful. Mm-hmm. Like there's some like you guys talking about, oh, I have these nostalgic moments or I remember my mom playing mm-hmm. Jackson five in the frosted mm-hmm. flakes. Like it recalls something inside of mm-hmm. us. And I think it's just a great thing to think about that's mm-hmm. that if anything that's what this conversation is for anybody that's watching you're listening it's i don't think we have a I, you know that's one thing i love about our church is you know we we have a few small essentials mm-hmm. when it comes to god that we hold tightly mm-hmm. with a closed fist mm-hmm. and and then in the non-essentials we say there's liberty right and and i think that this is one of those areas to me where there's there's a liberty i think this is one where you in your own personal life and journey mm-hmm. really need to just assess what is good for you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. maybe and maybe some things that are okay in one season you might go it's not really healthy for me right mm-hmm. now in this mm-hmm. season but i think that's i think it's a good perspective for us to you know recognize that you know it's almost like that that one scripture says all things are beneficial but not or all things are permissible but not mm-hmm. all things are beneficial and there yeah. might be like mm-hmm. it, it's okay to enjoy it, but maybe there is some boundaries mm-hmm. that we should create at times just to protect our mind but and think about what we're listening to. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, on that line of thinking, the, you know, I mean, the other side of it is, so I have three boys, mm-hmm. you know, and I, um, you know, when you talk about like what is, you know, even going back to the scripture, what, you know, everything's permissible permissible that not everything's beneficial Mm -hmm. i think my role as a dad Mm -hmm. and jessica's role as as a mom is trying to figure out what is beneficial for our kids yeah Mm -hmm. right now you know and so um jude my oldest when you know from very early age he's just he asks questions all the time you know Mm -hmm. i mean anything from you know science to nature to i mean 
you know, the birds and the bees from, yeah. real, you know, it's yeah. like, how, how yeah. do I explain, you know, where babies come from to a four year old who's yeah. asking me, you know? And so I think one kind of illustration that I've used, you might help me flesh it out. Cause I think, I think it, Oh, I love this when I you said this illustration to this is like, um, I told Jude at one point, I said, Hey, you know how you help us carry in the groceries mm-hmm. and you know, you, you, you want to be a big help and some, you know, sometimes these bags are too heavy. And mm-hmm. so I give you like the bag mm-hmm. of bread cause it's lighter. Mm-hmm. And I said, it's because you don't have the muscles to carry all the bags yet. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of, you know, to respond to, I don't remember what question he asked me, but it was something that was too deep for a yeah. four year old's mind to understand. I said, it's kind of like, it's kind of like this, like the muscles that you, that, you know, that are growing mm-hmm. in your brain and in your heart, they're not heavy enough to, for me to answer that question. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I, I kind of feel like even looking back specifically on music, we're talking about music. Mm-hmm. For me, there's been times in my life where um, I felt like, you know, whether it was a conviction or emotion, mm-hmm. I, I guess I don't really care because God used those moments, sure. right, mm-hmm. right. Of, uh, in my life to, to shape me and to form me. And, you know, from throwing, throwing CDs out the window to, you know, that time God, God did a work in me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was that maybe a rash decision that a 16 year old did probably, but there was probably a pure motive behind it. Right. You, you were trying to move toward God yeah. and what he called you to do. And so maybe in that moment, I, I'd have the muscles yeah. to, to carry the music that I was listening to. And I yeah. need to have a little bit of a break. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense no, or not, but I think, I think it does. I think there's, you know, um, there's moments that God uses, um, in, has used in my life to shape me into who I am now. And I think sometimes that, that has looked like, okay, I'm going to not listen to music that, um, that is, would fall on the the Mm -hmm. secular Mm -hmm. side. Um, I think right now I'm a very different spot and I feel like I don't, even with my kids, I don't want to create this hard and fast line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause I think for me, I've dug out of a lot of black and white, like mm-hmm. I grew up in Bible Belt yeah. and it's like, if you do this, you are wrong. If yeah. you listen to this, mm-hmm. you are wrong. Any and of it. It's yes. like, if it's a secular label, yes. then it's all wrong. And it's like, yes. but the Beach Boys, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Even like, the what? Beach Boys. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so I think I've, I've done a lot of personal, yeah. like yeah. I had to do a lot of personal work to dig out of that hole. Yeah. And so kind of watching that Jackie Hill Perry video kind of made me like, kind of like bow my chest. Like, uh, uh-uh, uh, yeah. we're not going back there. <laughs> well, it's cause you don't yeah. want to go. It's cause, cause it, because part of it could feel, and I think she tried, she said it in that one or she, another one. She it's like, good. this yeah. is not to be legalistic. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a really important point. And I think that's what probably you kind of like, yeah. what causes that reaction is mm-hmm. because I told you, you and I kind of both more than you probably came out of them, yeah. that mm-hmm. purity movement yeah. that where it just felt like there wasn't a real good, maybe reason always given. Yeah. It was just do this or don't do mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. And and I think I understand to some extent. I think there are times in certain ages, and I've raised two kids, and there's times where you want to set boundaries because I thought that analogy was one of the best I've ever heard. I think it's phenomenal, like for a kid to be able to say, hey, there are some bags that are too heavy for you to carry. Mm-hmm. When you develop the muscles, mm-hmm. then you can. I think that's a beautiful analogy. And I think I think that could be true for people of all ages and kids. Mm-hmm. And I think thinking that through, I think as a parent, you know, I, all I know is w- what I'm trying to say is what, well, as a parent, I always tried to figure out what it looked like where we came from that environment mm-hmm. to where, again, maybe this is good or bad as we kind of grew older mm-hmm. and we kind of went, well, I don't think that this, you know, country album, this pops album that this, you know, it's like Taylor Swift from like 10 years ago. Like she's talking about her love and her mm-hmm. boyfriend, you know, like it, mm-hmm. it, it's not, ex- it's, I do remember what was the real draw the line, even in our cultural was the explicit lyrics, mm-hmm. the explicit warning, yeah. which is actually <laughs> more attractive to people <laughs> today. It feels like than repulsive. Yeah. But I remember when explicit was on CDs and it was like, Oh, you <gasps> definitely, that was, if your parents caught you with an <laughs> with an explicit so label on it. Did, did y'all ever, did you ever get, or did you ever give your kids, um, like Easter basket baskets? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like celebrating, yeah. Like celebrating, like celebrating something Jesus. evil. No, so no I, like celebrate, okay. celebrating yes. Jesus, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, one Easter, my mom got me 
um, a Limp Biscuit CD <laughs> yeah. um, from Walmart. Okay. And at the time, it you did. could buy edited CDs at Walmart, and so it didn't have that. On it there. didn't have the explicit. So warning. is that fine? It's because it didn't have the warning. Well, I, well, I know, but like yeah. in this whole argument, Here's right? What, yeah, edited versions. Sure. Is that fine? I well, see, this is where that was probably trash. Yeah, this is where <laughs> I I think this is where I think it takes the maturity. And I think it's a personal thing. Like, here's here's my take on the explicit warning. And I think I put that in the same category as the uh, motion picture uh, ratings, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like here here's my best way to 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 have an analogy to what it was like growing up then to where I am today. Okay, there was a time when it was like if a movie is rated this it's acceptable to go see. Mm -hmm. If it's rated the R, no, off limits. Mm -hmm. If it's PG-13, right? And so let's just recognize that those are are actual boundaries that are created not by a faith-based organization. They're created by a culture, you know, our Mm -hmm. own culture trying to put boundaries on Mm -hmm. for certain ages or help parents, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like then whatever those kind of like generic, real simplistic boundaries there were are PG-13 secular, sacred. It was just, mm-hmm. and there was no, and there was no, um, why? Yeah. Yeah. What's inappropriate about that? I mean, cause let's be honest, right? Passion of the Christ is rated R. Mm-hmm. And so I remember when that came out, then there were some people who were like, cause they were all, they were, they were raised to go, yeah. but never watch R rated movies. Goes, yeah. oh, I wanted to see the Passion of Christ because it's Jesus. <laughs> and I was like, you know, but I, I can't, you know? Yeah. And people that wrestled with that, I think it's because we had, we had these imposed cultural, boundaries that maybe didn't explain Mm -hmm. what in this movie is maybe inappropriate what isn't Mm -hmm. and so i i have tried to take maybe more of an approach which is let's not just use really simple binary Mm -hmm. boundaries but let's have some common sense and have some maybe spiritual awareness of what is maybe appropriate Mm -hmm. or inappropriate to Mm -hmm. listen to and maybe even in parenting Mm-hmm. But I will say in parenting, we, because of maybe the, the place we were, where we came out of mm-hmm. that, and it was like, wait a minute, I don't think this is that bad. Mm-hmm. You know, certain things, I think we did not parent the same way that we were parented. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think our kids, you know, for the most part, we tried to pay attention, you know, to what they mm-hmm. would listen to. It's real, I think also it was really hard yeah. when, you're, when you have kids in your older age and they have their own phones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that became really yeah. hard to, to monitor. And so I think we just tried to raise our kids in a way to say, these are the truths and this is what yeah. matters. And hopefully recognize in certain music things that are not right. Yeah. or healthy. I don't know. I think growing up, my parents did a really good job at kind of blurring that line in a sense, like even like music. Yes. But also even like drinking, like my parents, you know, my mom worked at a church my whole life, but like we would go get pizza and they would both have a beer, you know? <gasps> and so to hear, like, I remember meeting people when I went to a Christian college, there were people that were not like that. did not no. grow up like that. And we're just shocked, like to be around alcohol. It's like, <gasps> or like same thing, like to listen to music with cuss mm-hmm. words, or like you stub your toe and you say some people are like, <gasps> but I think what my parents taught me at a young age is what you were saying, like to figure out what I'm convicted about and like lean on the Holy Spirit that's in me, because you know, like you know when you cross a line or when it's like, oh, I probably shouldn't watch this, or I'm probably not like in this season of my life, I'm probably not I shouldn't listen to this and I think that that's helped me form and make decisions as mm. an adult because yeah. that line's always been blurred it wasn't mm-hmm. like coming out of this well how, where is the middle I feel like I've always kind of mm. lived in the middle ground cuz I didn't grow up in the bible belt and for me I think it's it's been a challenge to understand like how do you write off a whole like side of the world that's <clears throat> the amazing music like how do you write that off mm-hmm. or how do you you know passion of christ how do you cancel movies that aren't that bad. Mm-hmm. So I think it's, that's just, for me, it's been, what are you convicted about and walk in that and be confident in that. And yeah. it, it might not be the same for me or you or right. people in our circle. Like we have friends that have different convictions than us and like, we're not gonna, you know, try to pull them to the dark side. <laughs> yeah. um, it's like walk in what conviction you have and, and don't worry about what other people are convicted about. Mm. I think, you know, right, right on that, the, like the next part of it, which you do so well and which I feel like I've had to 
figure out is like how then do I be teachable if maybe what what I've thought mm-hmm. is is beneficial mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah maybe maybe isn't yeah you know I think that's being teachable it's yeah like, you know in this season of my life maybe that's not beneficial for me right yeah. now maybe yeah. that's not beneficial because I have you know three kids at home yeah who are yep. you know and so I'm, some of my behaviors need to change and yeah. so I think but again it's it's walking that line I mean, you <coughs> mentioned alcohol I think alcohol yeah. is something that I that, will I will like I will come back to and reevaluate my thoughts on that so often mm-hmm. mm. I really that kind know, of fits in doesn't it kind of it feel does. like it's almost like there was music, there was movies, there was alcohol, yeah, and it was there was a sacred yeah. and secular split. Yeah, <laughs> like I mean, it, that's another one. Mm-hmm. So your pastor it, drinks, <gasps> yeah. but it's like, I mean, I mean, because you know, if if I get to a point to to where I, you know, on the alcohol side of things, and I feel like having alcohol present in in my home mm-hmm. is something that hinders my children from taking their next steps with with God. Yeah, I'm gonna and, reevaluate my yeah. stance yeah. on. It. I'm yeah. not gonna be stubborn about it. Yeah. If, yeah. If my kids are, you know, their behavior is mimicking culture more than what, um, yeah. than a Jesus follower, and part of it has to do with the music they're listening to, then I'm going to evaluate the music I'm listening to. Oh, yeah. That's good. As I well. love that. And so I think that's being teachable, and that's, you know, not always fun. Yeah. yeah. But um, but then I think you know, on the let's go back to the Good music way. thing too. Yeah. Like, I'm really passionate about creating really good art. Mm-hmm. Right or about not not even creating good art mm-hmm. about about experiencing good art and mm-hmm. um, appreciating it and and I think if we were to draw that hard and fast line mm-hmm. we'd be missing out on a whole lot mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in what would be considered the the secular world mm-hmm. of really mm-hmm. good art. Um, I mean, you look back into you know some of the older times and like the church was at the <coughs> forefront of a lot of really good art. Yeah. Um, with Michelangelo and his mm-hmm. paint, uh, he, you know, he's the one who painted, mm-hmm. you know, um, a, a lot of the, you know, the, the sculptures of David, you know, like that are iconic today. That was, that was done through the means of the church, maybe not by believers, but the church kind of brought these yeah. guys mm-hmm. in yeah. and, and kind of <laughs> led the charge in good art. And mm-hmm. I think, um, I think that's, um, I think that's vital. You know, I think the church maybe for a little bit, and something I've always wrestled with is the church kind of lost its its luster in like in in seeking good art, seeking mm-hmm. excellence in what we create. Yeah. And um, and I don't know. I just think I think that's a that's a tension that the church will. We can't write off something that God has um, God is evidently in mm-hmm. this song that is secular. Like there's there's no doubt you know that God that. Um, that you can see pictures of, of how God works in secular music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's different than maybe singing songs that are scripture. Mm-hmm. Right. But I think we just got to be careful not to write things off just yeah. because it falls in this camp. Yeah. Yeah. No. I love the idea of like whatever season you're in because I can, like I did, I've done fasts where I don't listen to secular music and I yeah. only listen to worship music. I remember doing it in high school for 30 days. And I remember mm-hmm. what it did was it just pointed my attention to yeah. God like I would be driving and it would like normally I would just you know be listening to whatever but to listen to worship music it's like oh like it just moves your mind yeah. to a certain direction and so for that season it was great and I've had seasons where I'm like uh, like I feel heavy today like I'm not gonna I, and I feel like you naturally kind of go there like how you feel you're gonna like turn stuff on mm-hmm. to match that you know what I mean mm-hmm. like again I can remember telling you stories about or you telling me stories about like you're listening to something you're like uh, this is not the vibe right now I'm gonna yeah. go to this but like so I think that in the same way of like what season you're in just judging like what you're allowing yourself in what groceries you can carry mm-hmm. like that's 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 the answer mm. podcast over that's it <laughs> you solved it I think it's a I think it's just an interesting conversation because I I think um, there's probably other people listening and watching this that grew up in some of maybe the same environment mm-hmm. that I grew up or you grew up in mm-hmm. and have carried with them that tension, mm-hmm. you know, and, and then maybe their faith, you know, one of the things I, I love that, um, that, that scripture does say in the new Testament is it really does talk about what does it look like to have your own personal convictions mm-hmm. and to not impose those mm-hmm. on others, but at the same time, make sure that whatever your personal conviction is or isn't that you are allowed mm-hmm. to do again, the 
it might be uh, permissible, but it might not be beneficial. But if you mm -hmm. if it's okay for you and it does not affect you in a negative way, the only place where Scripture says that it becomes sin is when it causes someone else to stumble. And, and I think, to me, that that's one of those things. I loved what you said, too, about, I think, parenting. I think every parent needs to kind of figure out what kind of atmosphere you're creating at home, mm -hmm. whether it's through music, whether it's through food or drink or mm -hmm. whatever, if it's alcohol, yeah, you know, whatever. I think we all have to figure out what atmosphere we're creating at home. Mm -hmm. And But I also, I always just wanted to do it in a way that... Um, like one of the things that's cool is I see my, my daughters today and you know, they, they like a variety of music, secular music, mm -hmm. you know, good. But I also love it when they get really excited about, Oh, Hey, did you hear this new song that we did at church that mm -hmm. we, that we wrote mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they love that or they love, you know, mm -hmm. and I think, I think if, if, if I've hopefully given them enough of, uh, uh built their muscles enough mm -hmm. to where they can hopefully discern yeah. this that music that particular song or that's probably not appropriate mm -hmm. I, I really shouldn't fill my spirit with mm -hmm. that but still can love and get excited about a mm -hmm. song that our church writes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or you know what i mean like mm -hmm. versus because i i almost felt like before it was kind of like well here are the songs you get to sing yeah you don't get to enjoy <laughs> any of the rest yeah. of the you know the art then the you know mm -hmm. and and i think we've tried to really create a very different atmosphere of going mm -hmm. You know, hey, we enjoy this music. This is fun, but we really also love this, mm -hmm. this modern, you know, worship music or this. Mm -hmm. And we have found our kids love it, mm -hmm. and that way, some of that truth is getting into them. And mm -hmm. you know, so I just think I think music is just one of those categories in that mm -hmm. sacred, sacred, mm -hmm. uh, secular divide that was such a difficulty growing up mm -hmm. and trying to figure out how do I, how do I walk that yeah. out in my own life personally and. I think, you know, if you're a Jesus follower, I think it's, I mean, a really simple answer is just like, like, just ask God what you need right now. Yeah. You know, like what, like, is this, I mean, you can even, it's a cool thing about God. You can be really blunt. It's like, uh, God should, is this okay? Yeah. Is yeah. this, is this filling my spirit? Yeah. Um, is this, um, is this, you know, something that, that I need to expose myself to? But I think also the other thing is like God help me see you even in mm -hmm. even in this. Yeah. In my you know, and I think um yeah. I think, you know, twenty something years I've I've done worship music <laughs> at a church and um ninety five percent of the time when I am listening to music it's not gonna be worship music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that's you know, it it's I think that comes from like I um Tucker, you talked about kind of living in the gray. Well, I grew mm -hmm. up in black and white. My mentality is very black and white, mm -hmm. um, uh, right, wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I've had to develop, what does it look like to, to understand right mm -hmm. and wrong? I think we talked about that mm -hmm. last week. Understand yeah. what's right and wrong, but somehow operate in a healthy way in the gray. Yeah. And I think in music, that's, that's kind of where I found myself is like, yes, I love and appreciate worship music, mm -hmm. um, but what fuels my spirit, and I can honestly say what, what right now will point me point me to Jesus because of seeing the art that is coming out of different secular artists is 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 going to be probably a secular album rather than driving in the car and listening to a worship album mm -hmm. and that's not to say that worship music doesn't move me and affect me and i you know i can listen to a worship album and think this is going to be awesome at our church mm -hmm. but what i hope comes from it um from that mentality is um is being able to um maybe take some of the influence and some of the expression that I've seen uh, throughout genres of music mm -hmm. and bring that to our church in some yeah. way. Yeah. We, well, and I'll, just to, to that point, I think one of the things that you, because I, I think you have a little bit of a different approach to music than probably a lot of people in the fact that number one, it's been a passion of yours in mm -hmm. creating it. I, and I think, I think a lot of people love music, but they don't have a yeah. gift or desire to create music. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that that does, and, and here's, I'll just give people an idea of how I've seen what you were talking about come to life is that we'll have a song idea, which we haven't written in a while guys, but mm -hmm. we'll have a song. <laughs> we have a, like a, a song concept or an idea mm -hmm. that like we've been working on and you will say, gosh, there is this like, hook or this sound mm -hmm. you know what i mean or this feeling from 
a song or an album or like mm-hmm. there's an artist that has this kind of like the beat mm-hmm. and whatever feel an artist and I would love to incorporate that type of feel mm-hmm. into this song. Mm-hmm. Would you say that's a probably yeah. like so? With obviously not plagiarizing it, we don't ever take no, anything because we influence. create stuff new. But it's influence of going. Yeah. I love stylistically how this music and the the chord progression type feel and mm-hmm. how it does its thing. And it's like, man, what if we brought that into this song mm-hmm. and created mm-hmm. a song yeah. that has that feeling? And partially because that song makes me feel this way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So can I take a worship song or a song that I want to write about God or mm-hmm. onto this and have the music make me feel this way? Mm-hmm. No, that's good. I but, think. Yeah. I mean, I think. I think that probably speaks to like how I'm influenced in music. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think, um, you know, you look at, you go to the top 40 secular, you know, charts or top, you know, two, I mean, Zach Bryan just released an album, yeah. singer, songwriter, country guy. And like, you had well, me listening to it. Yeah. And but like, <clears throat> I mean, his whole album was on the top 20. Yeah. Billboard top 20, you know? And so like, he's obviously doing something that's resonating with people. Right. Yep. Yeah, you know, um, I don't listen to country music. Mm-hmm. I listen to Zach Bryan. I love it. Listen, so there's he's something- like, he's like <laughs> this is what's ironic because I wanted to, you know, it's that whole I don't listen to secular music. He's like, I don't listen to country music. Yeah, I don't. That that's where I draw the line. <laughs> that's where. Hey now, <laughs> hey, I like. I've actually country. kind of come to like country Me music too. since my wife she fell in love with it, and so when I'm in the car with her, it's the only thing that's on. Mm. But I like Zach Bryan. Like I don't. I, I don't like old country, I'll just be honest with you. I like a little bit newer sounding country, but mm-hmm. I will say, and this is the joke, this is one of the things I think I think we even mm-hmm. maybe texted you in the group. Mm-hmm. I was telling Lorley Lor- when we were driving and listening to him, I was like, one thing that's refreshing about Zach Bryan was every single song was not about his beer, his dog, <laughs> or his truck. Yeah. Or like, and, I mean, there is some stereotypes, yeah. but it is yeah. pretty true. Yeah, like, beer. there's... There's whiskey, there's beer, there's something in every country (laughs) song. And I think he may have mentioned one line in it, but it it felt like it was, I do feel like Zach Bryan in that particular album feels more emotional, feels more personal. It doesn't feel like that generic, just Mm -hmm. have fun country music that's kind of about the stereotypical things. I think, I think that was, sorry, I'll let you, that was my point in that. It's like, that's what you connected with. Yeah. It's, you know, someone who doesn't usually listen to any country music. Um, somebody whose whose album hit you know the top twenty in the country, um, he's doing something that's resonating with a lot mm-hmm. of people. Yeah, yeah. and so um, that's what I want to do in the church. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it Zach goes Bryan? beyond. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, resonate with yeah. you know with where people are and, and 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 hit emotions with people that maybe they haven't felt in a while. Yeah, you know, and I think music can do that. I so. do too. Yeah, I think if people saw the playlist that we used or like if we made a playlist of all the songs that we sent to our producer when we were making our Mm -hmm. album they'd be shocked because it's not like oh elevation or like Mm -hmm. this big church it's like it was all secular Mm -hmm. music that was influenced Mm -hmm. and the cool thing about our producer was he did both like he did you know worship music in a church but he also does like country artists and you know secular and so i think that kind of like married it's all music and we can be influenced mm-hmm. and we can learn something from both. Like there are yeah. things that the church does awesome. The, the secular world could take that and run yep. with it and do something like that. And there are things mm-hmm. in the secular music world that we can take and run with that. So basically what you're saying is our next album is country worship. <laughs> is that what's called? Yeah. Country, country worship. Like hey, here we go. <laughs> it's country worship. I, I think, country it, worship. I think those are all just some good thoughts. And I think we're just kind of having some, I mean, we we just barely talked before him, but just like a raw conversation yeah. about like, how do you process this and walk it out if you're someone, especially if you're someone of faith. And I think mm-hmm. these are all good thoughts. And I think everybody, you, you could have, you could be watching this and have a very different perspective. You may, I think all secular music's of the devil and that's fine. I can respect your view. And, but you know, we just know that there are, there are people who maybe don't quite see it all that but i do think that there are boundaries that are important and i think as a parent i think even personally Mm -hmm. you know i think that there are it's it's kind of like i was thinking this when you were making mention of like hey asking god what's right for me in this season or what's right for me i i think it's the same the same kind of application you can apply the principle to you know for somebody um that's maybe had a problem or maybe certain aspects in their life it could be alcohol like Mm -hmm. we mentioned before that could be a, like a temptation that there could be a connection mm-hmm. that every time they kind of abused alcohol, they did things that were yeah. really destructive in their mm-hmm. life. And so for someone like that, it may not be that, 
drink, having a drink here and there is actually bad. But for that person, yeah. it might connect yeah. to, to really destructive behaviors and patterns and bring, again, like we said, music's emotional. I'm just bringing in a, yeah. co a concept. So for them, they might go, I, I'm not going to drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they might choose not to, which, by the way, I have found is actually a growing sentiment even on like there are i didn't know this but there's like a growing and a lot of younger people that that's not even faith related that are just writing mm -hmm. off alcohol which i, I didn't mm -hmm. know that it was just kind of mm -hmm. fascinating i don't know why but but i think there could be some people who make that decision for mm -hmm. another reason yeah. and maybe it could be for some that's why i want to point out i think for somebody and unlike me i don't have that but someone could be there's a connection to music from their past that they was caught in a lifestyle that was destructive and other things that maybe for that person, they're like, I can't go back to that music because yeah. it does it. And I understand that for all the same reasons yeah. that worship music also connects deeply and in, and in, in emotionally into the soul and connects yeah. you to God. Mm -hmm. Somebody may feel connected to something else. Mm -hmm. And for them, I didn't have that experience growing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for me, I don't really have that emotional connection, spiritual connection to something in a secular song. It yeah. doesn't affect me mm -hmm. in a bad way. Yeah. Let's just say that. But I also know that there are some stuff that is probably more appropriate than mm -hmm. others. And I'm, I choose to try to not listen to inappropriate stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that's because of a word or this. I'm just saying content. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, the, and so I think it's a personal thing. So mm -hmm. do you listen to Beyonce? No, but I don't really listen to a lot of <laughs> secular music, to be honest with you. I told you guys, I mentioned that church, I listen to books more than anything else. But yeah. <laughs> So anyways. But boring. Boring? Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a fascinating conversation. I was just more sparked by the real, kind of caught yeah. me. I was like, that's fascinating. You know, mm -hmm. I never really thought of it that way, and I just thought it'd make an interesting conversation. Yeah. And so, you know, take from it what you will. Yep. You know, if you have thoughts on this, I, I know that when it comes to, here's what I know. When it comes to things like music, when it comes to things like alcohol, when it comes to other things, people in the church are really passionate about it and have real strong opinions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so, and that's fine. We, we can appreciate people's opinions. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just think this is, again, to kind of frame all this conversation for what we really believe here at this church. There are a few things when it comes to God, and who Jesus is, and salvation, all those things that we hold very tightly. Mm -hmm. We hold you know, traditional views and, mm -hmm. and that we, you know, value. And we're, they're like, we call them non-negotiables. They're the essentials. All other things, we say there's liberty, mm -hmm. that there's a freedom, but, you know, just make sure that it's, it might be permissible. Make sure it's also beneficial mm -hmm. for you, your family, your environment, whatever it is that you're listening to or mm -hmm. drinking or whatever. Mm -hmm. But anyways, so it's good. Interesting. Good. Fascinating conversation. Maybe yeah. we'll circle back sometime mm -hmm. to another aspect mm -hmm. of, and, and we wrap this up. I actually, again, I don't want to maybe bring another thing up, but I, I think that there is something about music and lyrics that I think music, there's something really unique about music itself that would be fun to talk about sometime. Like what really stirs people mm -hmm. musically i'm talking about ignore the lyrics mm -hmm. musically what stirs people mm -hmm. chord progressions what the what right is ones. it but do you think there's okay yes. we are about to break yes. but, but do right you think chords. there is something to again it's not really like a secular sacred because how many songs could you go out there and with the same four chord progression you could play 15 <laughs> you know you know the, yep. out there there's you can do the same chord progression and do 15 worship songs mm -hmm. and 15 secular songs so that's not it. i think but there is music that moves people yes. maybe more than others yeah i think right? i think it is a whole other conversation you, but let me just say i think i think doing worship you, music yeah for 20 something years yeah i know the chord progressions <laughs> and the moments to create but you that will that will move move people move a room uh-huh and i think i i think let me just say that comes with a lot of responsibility because yeah. i'm not yes i'm not wanting to create this emotional moment right but i think i think God has given us the ability mm -hmm. to to know how music operates and know how music works and can use music and chord progressions and sounds and yeah. mm -hmm. to enhance what God is trying to do in this mm -hmm. room. So basically and, what he's saying is if you want the Holy Spirit to enter the room, play a dotted, flat seven. Dotted eight notes. Mm -hmm. Remember, what the, remember the joke with the dotted eight notes yes. a long time ago? Yes. <laughs> in, so in different styles of music. Dotted eight delay of music, which, which again, we, we, we don't have to go back into it, but I, I just think that's a really fascinating concept because as we were talking about how music moves us and specific music moves us, that, and maybe in an environment 
like church might help us feel closer to God, I wonder, I would assume the same argument could be made for music in a secular environment. Sure. Mm-hmm. Right? That it sure. could. I don't think most secular music, there's like, like what was in that Jackie Hill Perry video? Yeah. Like it's like somebody trying to, you know, lead people to devil worship or something like that. But there is music that like, people have used throughout the ages for canting for other things Mm -hmm. for ceremonies for you know of all versions Mm -hmm. we're not talking about christianity alone i mean and so there is something really powerful about music Mm -hmm. without the lyrics just music that i think is also something unique that i'd never really thought of yeah i mean because you can can relate it to like how people write stories how communicators you know whether in the church or out like there's there's formulas that yeah. communicators will use yeah. that know like there's cadence. Yeah. There's, yeah, you know, there's intonation. The, and so I think that's the same thing in music. Mm-hmm. Like there's structure and sounds and chord progressions that um that move people. I agree. There's tones, there's frequencies. Yeah. Like one of the things I remember learning uh from a sound engineer, you know, Matt, who what used to be on staff with us, he's brilliant. I mean, he traveled with who was it, fun and um, the bleachers, the bleachers mm-hmm. and walk the moon. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, mm-hmm. he's just a phenomenal guy, but I'm, I remember him coming in and it was, again, this is the benefit of bringing like a, a sound engineer into a church environment and him really explaining there are frequencies and instruments that if you do not get your sound balanced and to a certain level, they will not come out. Mm-hmm. Like you will not hear the frequencies that those instruments really put mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. until mm-hmm. you get to a certain decibel level to get certain, because it has to open up to mm-hmm. allow, whether it's drums with the way their shit, the shell and everything and the, mm-hmm. the frequency they're designed for. And so there's, there's a lot more, there's a yeah, lot more depth to music than people yeah. realize. I, I guess that's what I'm but saying. Think about if you drew that sacred secular line and you said, nah, he works for a second. Oh yeah, band. of course. I'm that's what I mean. Him in. Mm-hmm. Like how, like how we wouldn't understand that. Yeah. Like and I think there's so much, in the secular world that the church is missing out yeah. on because they draw those lines. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think, um, as, as well as, you know, right. And, and in junction with that, conjunction with that is understanding that the impact of those things supernatural or spiritually in our soul, those music does have an effect mm-hmm. one way or the other. It can have an effect to the good and for the bad. And so anyways, well, it's a fascinating conversation. I think mm-hmm. something that we all love yep. music and, and we, you know, love to write music and mm-hmm. we love to think about the experience that we're creating. And that's mm-hmm. our goal is we want people to have an encounter with God mm-hmm. yep. and that's how we kind of view what we do. And so thanks for joining us thanks guys. It was awesome. Hey, thanks as always, us. we hope you enjoyed today's conversation and maybe it sparked something in you. Maybe it brought you back to throwing away CDs or burning them. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's your playlist and going, I'm going to delete that place. Maybe it's not, you know, we, we want you to think. I think yeah. that's one of the big things yeah. that we try to do at this table is to help people think critically yeah. and what it looks like to do it. And so if you have any feedback, again, as I said last week, if you have, if you hate uh, secular music and you hate anything that mm-hmm. we said, you can send an email to Russ.more at the <laughs> X. Dutch. You know what I mean? You can send it, send your hate to Russ. He'll be back. He would love to field it. If you have comments, if you want to share this with someone, just start a com- start your own conversation yeah. about music and and um, and how it affects you. I think that'd be great. So thanks guys for being yeah, here. For awesome time as always. Until next week, have a great one. <laughs>